Um, so next we have um, Nicholas Love. He is the Vice President of Digital Marketing at GNS Business Communications, who is our presenting sponsor for today's conference. Um, he is going to talk about verses and what marketing professionals can learn from the verses movement. And also hopefully you talk about how amazing the last couple of versus performances have been. <laughs> um, I'll let you take it away and share your screen. Um, I'm excited to see your presentation. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, all right. So uh, let me share my screen. And we can kind of kick this thing off. Um, so, you know, certainly first and foremost, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, really delighted to have the opportunity to, uh, to speak with you today to really talk about, you know, a, a, a movement unlike anything that we've seen, right? And, and, and versus um, was just powerful. Many would argue that it's, it was the gem of, of 2020. Um, if if you can say that, <laughs> uh, but before we can before we get into that, just a little bit a uh, little background about myself. Uh, I'm a two time uh, graduate of Grambling State University. Um, prior to GNS, spent a lot of time marketing in the higher education um, industry. So spent some time with University of Chicago, Booth School of Business, the Ohio State, and and then most recently NC State. I actually got my my start as an owner of talent. Uh, within digital media from an ESPN perspective. Uh, had an opportunity to really grace the stages at South by Southwest, done a lot of webinars with Hootsuite or Net, uh, NetBase, um, really good relationship with Adweek in terms of being a two-time executive mentee. And, um, you know, if you want to follow me, uh, that's my Twitter handle at, at Nicholas uh, J. Love. So, you know, um, certainly we know that 2020 just um, you know, drove a lot of disruption across the board, right? Um, you know, but particularly from, you know, a way of life perspective, right? You know, the inability to go to the movies, the inability to go to concerts, um, uh, suspending a lot of the, the sports um, experiences that, that people had grown so accustomed to, to, to experiencing. And, you know, what that really created, right, was a problem. Um, and, and certainly Timberland and Swiss Beats did a phenomenal job of providing a solution to that problem. And that really kind of gets into the, to this agile and nimble mentality. So um, if I could borrow from a, a, a popular phrase from Clubhouse, let me reset the room and let's reset in terms of how the versus movement kind of came into play from a 2020 perspective. Quarantine music fans getting the treat of a lifetime. They're calling it the Versus Effect. Hundreds of thousands of people are tuning in. That's Madison Square Garden three times over. The response was incredible. Like after this was over, my numbers went up crazy. All of the artists' catalogs been going up for half the same. Babyface and Teddy Riley's songs double the streams. They crashed the internet. Instagram made it. No. Crash IG. Monday oh. Night Versus is the most incredible night of my life. A lot of people call it battles. We're battling enough in the world today. So let's flip it around and celebrate each other by playing amazing songs that change the world. The news here is you're actually going to keep it going. So who else are we going to see? So, you know, really quickly by the numbers in 2020, there were about 22 battles and estimated over 30 million views, um, nearly 300 billion impressions from a marketing perspective and nearly 5 million mentions and, and 5 million posts. And, and certainly, you know, the, the, the caveat here is that this is data without having access to the activity that was happening on Facebook because of their restricted API access, right? And so, you know, what, what that really represents, right, is, is really driving home the understanding that marketing is changing and it will continue to. Uh, you know, many of you who may be studying, you know, business or communications, um, you know, we've heard this old theory that, that content is king. Uh, and, and, and today's marketing really uh, identifies that the majority of content is really a commodity. 
um, you know, the, the, the marketing of yesterday, right, you know, celebrated this idea that the, 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 the creative was most important. And today, user experience really drives recall and recall being defined as, do you remember actually seeing it, right? Because whether it's the news feed, whether it's websites, whether it's blogs or, 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 or search engine experiences, right? There is an insane amount of content out there and they're all competing, right, to certainly have that resonance uh, with the user, right? Um, you know, today data is one of the most valuable um, assets that exists, right? And so, you know, as uh, future, you know, marketing strategies or, or entrepreneurs or, or things of that nature, you know, you're gonna have access to an overabundance of data. And so it's gonna be critical that you understand what is most important and how can you best use it to really accomplish the things that you want to do. Um, and then and really, you know, this, this, this emphasis on agile thinking and, and being nimble, right? And, and certainly, you know, what Swiss Beats and what Timberland um, introduced right, was this idea of, uh, of identifying an issue, providing a solution that ultimately grew to be even bigger than what I think they thought it would become. And throughout that process, right, um, you know, uh, adopting a test and learn mentality, right, where you see something, you fix it, you build on it, you introduce something new and you see how people react to it. And we'll certainly kind of get into that a little bit later uh, on in the presentation. So, you know, I think one of the, we'll, we'll speak about three core themes. Um, uh, there's a lot to learn from verses, but you know, certainly within a time frame, I want to be sensitive to that, right? So, first and foremost, serialize your content when you can, right? And you know, let's kind of set the stage in terms of what do I mean when I talk about uh, the serialization of content, right? And it's this idea of taking a concept or a topic and, and turning it into an installment, right? Like developing a series, right, based on on a singular idea, um, and and through serialization, right, content marketers. Um, can capture, you know, all different types of feelings in terms of the hearts and the intention of their audience and create an anticipation for, for their content. And we've certainly seen that throughout the Versus um, experience, right? Um, so, you know, good, good is good, but great is bad, right? And the value of content marketing is, is truly rooted in the experience that happens between the customer and, and, and a company, right? You know, earlier I talked about, right, you know, content being a, a commodity. Uh, and, and really, you know, I think it's important, uh, particularly as, you know, you're studying, uh, you know, uh, elements of, of, of communications or, or marketing or business communications or things of that nature, right, that you understand the difference between good content and great content, right? Good content creates an interaction, right? Great content drives recall and allows the consumer to see a solution through the interaction with that piece of con through, I'm sorry, through the interaction with that piece of content. And that ultimately can influence them to make a decision um, uh, to either make a purchase or, you know, understand or investigate it a little bit further. So through gems to kind of leave with you in terms of this particular thing, first and foremost, right, make your content valuable, understand what your audience cares about and deliver to them. Number two, segment your value. Develop a plan that brings both breadth and depth across your content journey and, and, and continuously uh, drive value through each touch point. Third, drive creativity, right? Continuously drive innovation in your how and in, in your why, right? We know that there are really two core angles to innovation. There's what's called incremental, where these are small adjustments. And then there's what's called substantial innovation, right? And those are major adjustments. And the difference between the two will often drive uh, choice or preference, right? And so when you think about, you know, uh, for again, for you, you aspiring entrepreneurs or, or, or marketers, you know, you're going to be operating in a very competitive space. And so your ability to, tr to, to continuously show point of differentiation or what is unique about what you are marketing or about what you're selling. Um, in, a, in a very substantial and innovative way is gonna be key to your success in your respective career. 
Uh, the second core theme is really this idea of listen, pivot, and provide. Um, and so, you know, first and foremost, right, there's, you know, a, a debate in terms of, well, do you, do you control your brand image? And the, the, the short answer is, no, you don't, right? I mean, your brand image is not what's said, right, by you, but it's the thoughts, the feelings, and behaviors, right, that people experience when interacting with a brand. Right? And so one way that marketers and communicators can influence the brand image of their company, their client, or, or even of themselves, right, in the digital space is by creating relevant and resonating content that creates a slow, a slow scroll experience. And so, you know, at GNS, right, we, we certainly operate within, uh, you know, this understanding of trying to continuously acquire deeper intelligence through social listening. And I won't go through all of these questions in terms of how they, how they apply to the versus battle. But what I will say to you guys is that uh, as aspiring marketers, right, um, the data will only be as valuable as the questions that you establish upfront to have answered, right? And so I, I wanna be able to bring this framework to reality for you as it pertains to the versus move movement, and we'll focus on two R's. First and foremost, reputation, right? What are the key audiences saying about the brand? Now there were, you know, there are a lot of mentions, right? You saw the by the number slide earlier, uh, but here's a, a, a major influence in terms of Gab Gabrielle Union, right? Who uh, prior to the E42 short uh, versus battle, right? You know, certainly had this very nostalgic feeling and, and it was a demonstration of excitement, right, of what was getting ready to happen. And so, you know, as a brand, right, as a company, right, you want to be able to have key audiences, right, or key influencers who are very interested in what you are delivering. That speaks volumes, right, about the reputation and how well what you are delivering is connecting with that particular audience. From a resonance perspective, right, are audiences willing to advocate for and share the brand? When you think about the intersection of sports and entertainment, right, it makes perfect sense that Sports Center uh, would be involved uh, or would be interacting with the versus movement, right, and their ability to tie, right, what was happening in the Bay Area with Mr. I'm just here not to get fined, right, and Marshawn Lynch, um, you know, you know, certainly puts a different spin in terms of this idea of advocacy for a respective brand. And so, you know, again, there were hundreds of thousands of, uh, of examples, right, of people really advocating from a reputational or resonance perspective as it pertains to the versus movement. But I just wanted to really start to kind of humanize when we introduce frameworks like this as marketers, right? How does this really apply to the various things that you may be touching on a daily basis. So ultimately, you know, to really kind of take a step back and just evaluate the overarching sentiment of the versus movement, right? We took, you know, we did a, a, a quick three month analysis. Um, and, you know, for the most part, the conversations around the versus movement right, lean relatively positive with a net sentiment of 60 uh, percent, right? Positive conversations include conversations mentioning favorite songs or generating, you know, positive feedback to various battles. Um, and when you think about music, right, and 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 its impact, uh, you know, on us, you know, just from a culture perspective, um, you know, it, it's it, it will have a tendency to drive some type of action. And as marketers, when you think about content and we talk about the, you know, the differences, right, um, that recall. Uh, uh, of those actions is, is where you can kind of see that coming through. Uh, negative conversations, you know, there's always going to be some, some conversations happening. In, in this case, I, I actually think they were kind of accurate. Um, you know, technical difficulties will never forget, um, hashtag never forget what happened with Teddy Riley and, and, and Babyface um, and having to reschedule, you know, that battle. And then ultimately battles not starting on time. I mean, it's just, it's big facts. There's no way to kind of deny that. And so hopefully, right, you know, this is an example of, um, you know, understanding what's being said about the respective brand. And then how do you, how do you take that intel? How do you take that insight to influence how you continuously go forward in the future? 
And then ultimately win with brand experience at each touch point. Um, and so, you know, when you think about versus right as a movement, right? I mean, it started as an idea, right? And it started within this, with this idea of just a singular Instagram, you know, live stream, right? Then the next thing you know, people were, you know, publishing it on YouTube, right? Earned media started to pick it up in terms of CNN or Billboard or, you know, the New York Times, right? You know, people started to have conversations within Clubhouse about it, right? Snapchat uh, activity started to kind of come through. Artists started to have, you know, additional streams on their respective websites or selling merchandise versus radio launch through, you know, through, through the partnership with Apple. Apple TV kind of came through in terms of offering another experiential touch point, right? Obviously, Twitter has been there since day one. And then certainly, you know, we can't forget about, about Facebook. And so, you know, when you think about the elements that I've been talking about thus far in terms of content serialization, right? Winning with brand experience, right? Um, and, 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 and listening, pivoting and, and, and applying, right? You know, all of these things are very much interconnected in terms of how do you continuously maximize content that is resonating well with the audiences, right? But, but what a lot of companies have to really take a step back on and, and really think about is access, right? And so for the longest, it was, you know, we're gonna build a website and we're gonna have social media activity, drive people to the website, and that's how we're gonna be able to measure success. Well, as I talked about earlier, right? Marketing has been changing and it's been changing for quite some time. And so, you know, the real value, right, is around this idea of, of having access, right? You, and you think about it, users don't go to Instagram for high production value experiences, right? They arrive with the intent to acquire authentic access to people who they have an affinity for, right? Or, who, or, the, or people who they wanna build relationships with or form a direct connections um, with the value proposition that those entities are actually offering. It, finding and maintaining a digital community, you know, in 2020 became as, as, as essential as self-care as the months rolled on and COVID cases continued to rise, right? You know, it gave people an opportunity to have a distraction, right? Dates were being planned around, um, you know, these types of events, right? Family gatherings, right? When you think about the Gladys Knight, Patti LaBelle, right? I'm, I, I would love to see what was the lift on the patty pies? Because I know they made an appearance in my household during that time. And then third, right, you know, digital has changed what access means, right? Access to culture, celebrities, and the moments likely to be inseparable from how we remember these, these days and weeks and months, right? You know, finally, right, you might forget what you tweeted, but you'll never forget how the experiences made you feel. And, 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 and as brands, when you're thinking about how you go to market, right, that has to be front and center with what you deliver and how you maximize um, the offerings that you're providing. Thank you. I'm, I'm Nicholas Love. Again, that's, that's my Twitter handle. And, and certainly, you know, I can certainly pause for a for question. Well, thank you so much. Um, I was really excited for this presentation. Um, I think that it's amazing that Versus kept us so entertained during the quarantine and being able to establish it, itself as a brand and just the tidbits that you've given us pulling from Versus. You know, I didn't think of all of this when I was watching Gucci and Jeezy. I was just hoping that a fight didn't break out. <laughs> So thank you for sharing all of this. Um, <laughs> you know, that was my first concern. Um, but a couple of questions that I have just to get things started. Um, how can students use the versus experience in kind of crafting their own platforms. We have a lot of students that have their own YouTube channels, you know, they're working on creating their own platform on Instagram. So how can they take what you've given us and use those ideas uh, to craft their own platform? 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, earlier I talked about this idea of content serialization, right? And, and, and I think it's, it's, it's critical that as, you know, students are developing these ideas around what their content series may be or, or what type of content that they may want to produce, right? Everything doesn't have to necessarily be stuffed in this one touch point, right? And, and, and how do you start to really truly bring depth to that idea and really exploring it to its greatest possibility around the various angles to then introduce, right? A, th a three or five part series on that singular topic um, so that you can actually move people from episode one to episode two to episode three, right? And, and, and you know, last Friday, um, you know, what we've done over at GNS, particularly with the digital team, is we've had different, um, you know, virtual speakers and we actually did a session on the correlation between, you know, content marketing and rap. And, and, and so we had, you know, an up and coming rapper, his name was Yao G out of, out of New York. And one of the things I asked him, I, I said, well, you know, it's really easy to come out with a dope first song. It's really easy to come out with a dope piece of content the first time. But what is your process in terms of how you follow that up? And, and I think that that would be the question that I would leave with students, right, is, be allergic to the plateau, right? Don't get comfortable with producing a singular piece of content that your, that, that your partners, that your boys, you know, that, that your people are saying like, man, I really enjoyed it. And then you rest on your laurels, right? And then that follow-up is not necessarily what it should be because now you've created an expectation, right, that this is what you're going to get when you experience what I'm delivering to you, right? And so this idea of continuously understanding what's working and then, and then modeling <laughs> successful patterns, right, for episodes two, three, four, and five, I think would be critical. The other thing I would say um, before I kind of get on the sermons, uh, Stu, is, uh, <laughs> Is, is this idea of really, you know, allowing measurement to influence, right, what you do and, 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 and paying attention to metrics that are deeper, right, than those vanity metrics of likes, uh, of likes, right? Because when you think about, you know, social currency, right, I don't know about you, right, but I'm incredibly selective about what I comment on and what I share more so than what I like, right? And, and if you're creating video content, right, your ability to understand exactly how long are people engaged with you, <laughs> right? Where are they dropping off? Can you form like hypotheses on why people are dropping off? And then how can you introduce, right, new optimizations um, to continuously learn, right, what is going to be valuable and relevant to your audience. That's awesome. I think that point about data looking further than I got 300 likes on a photo. So it's good enough to go somewhere and be uh, featured somewhere, but actually seeing how many, you know, shares it's getting, how many comments and how many are quality comments. Exactly. I mean, because, you know, at the core, right, you think about the four fundamental reasons for why people are on social media, right, for why brands are on digital space. They want to inform or be informed. They want to educate or be educated. They want to entertain or be entertained, or they want to be able to build relationships, right? And, and, and so the metrics, right, that you, that, that you focus on need to be kind of connect, connected or, or tied to those four things. Awesome. So another question that I have, I know that you talked briefly about your background, but I think that it would be helpful to, for the students to kind of understand, you know, the skills and experiences that you might have gathered that brought you to GNS and your role today, and just any tips that you might have for 
you know, a junior who's interested in marketing, but isn't sure where to start? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so, so I, I will, I will say this, um, and I know my mom is probably watching, so she's probably going to crack a smile when, when I, when I tell this story, but, but you know, when, when I was down at Grambling, I used to live in the television center. Like I lived in there and everybody who was anybody who would listen to me, right. They knew that my aspirations, right. Were to be an honor talent with ESPN. And anybody who said that wasn't going to happen, you know, it was just straight crickets in terms of my responses to them. And so, you know, I did the internships at ESPN. I networked properly, right? But there was this thing in the back of my head, but you know, back in the day that says, your calling is marketing. Your calling is actually in marketing. But I ignored it. I fought it, right? And and I got to ESPN. And 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 you know, I was doing my thing. Um, and, and the, the ironic thing was um, a lot of the clips that I was doing w- were only available on like Verizon VCAS back in the day, right? And so, you know, none of my friends, you know, very few of my family members had access to Verizon VCAS, right? So I used to share my clips on Facebook just so that they could actually see like, no, I'm actually doing on air work, right? Like this is, I'm not spitting, you know, hot air, like, like these are facts, right? And little would I know then that when I got to Louisiana Tech, I took what I learned at ESPN and was ahead of a lot of brands, a lot of entities on live tweeting basketball games, creating behind the scenes content with the coaches, right? Tapping into our, uh, tapping into our players to serve as influencers to potentially drive ticket sales based off of their social media handle, creating influencer policies and plans for those students, right? Um, getting the coaching staff on social media, right? All of these things that really took off in 2011, 2012, I was doing back in 2009. And so the, 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 the message there, and I've been able to apply and, and, and build, right, in every different step along the way. And so the message there is understand that, you know, we are shaped by the experiences that we have in life. And you may not necessarily see the value in what you're doing, but understand that, there, that, that there's divine order in everything that, that happens to you and what you do. And ultimately someday, right, it's going to make sense, right? That light bulb will, will come on. So really immerse yourself in this idea of being intellectually curious and really seeking, the, uh, seeking to understand. The other thing that I would say is that um, uh, for those of you who may be like very, very passionate, very, very passionate, right? Understand that ideas are better when they compete. And so when you challenge, you challenge on the premise of an idea, not necessarily a person. And as an ideator, right? You never fall in love with an idea because when you fall in love with an idea and someone challenges that idea, you personalize that idea and you can, and, 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 and it sometimes goes left, right? And so really you want people to challenge your ideas with rigor because either one of two things are happening. Either one, you're not explaining it properly, right? Or two, there are actual gaps in the respective idea. And so the more challenges that happen, the stronger your ideas come and puts you in the best possible position to build or birth ideas to the maximum possibility. I love those. Those are great tips. I wish I would have heard that at 20. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> um, so we do have a question from Facebook. Stephen asks if you can talk more about content becoming a commodity. Um, yeah. You take. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, everyone's doing it, right? I mean, we, we've been hearing this. I mean, it, it is now an expectation, right? It, it, is, it is merely table stakes <laughs> um, at, this, at this particular juncture. And, 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 and 
how content, you know, the, the, the phrase content uh, being king, how that kind of came into play was that back in the day, you know, most people, you know, weren't thinking through the lens of content marketing, right? It was primarily, I need to sell you something, right? Then it evolved right into, okay, well, I need to, I need to demonstrate, right, how this content, you know, um, can help, you know, mitigate certain things, right? But, but now, you know, it, it is merely everyone is doing the same thing. And so, and so, you know, now it's switching, right, to really emphasizing that, you know, the experience that you have with that content, that content's ability to, to, to pull those emotional strings, your ability to seamlessly navigate uh, that content and, and really, you know, start to kind of hit those respective triggers to make you take different <laughs> actions and actually remember, you know, as I was talking about earlier, it's, from a recall perspective, um, to keep brands top of mind um, is, is, is critical because we, we are getting a significant amount of content delivered to us on a daily basis, nearly on a every 15 minutes, right? Particularly when you think about the emergence of social media and 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 how you know citizen journalism or user generated content has immersed in, in our daily lives. Thank you for sharing. Um, if no one else has any other questions, I don't know if there's any final words that you wanna leave with the students before we head to the next session. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think first and foremost, um, you know, GNS Business Communications is just incredibly, uh, proud and, and happy to be the title sponsor for this event. You know, we certainly recognize um, the, the intellectual excellence right, that exists at North Carolina Central across various, um, you know, pillars across the university, um, you know, and, and really excited, you know, about the opportunity for, for deeper collaboration and partnership opportunities down the road. So um, I hope you guys enjoy the session uh, and, and, and I hope everyone enjoys um, you know, the, the overarching um, um, webinar as well, because I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it thus far. So it's great to see you um, and uh, thanks for having me. Yes, it was great to see you as well. Thank you so much. Um, and as you mentioned, we are so grateful to have GNS Business Communications on as our title and presenting sponsor. I'm so excited for the various opportunities that students will have to network with you all and learn about agency life and i'm looking forward to the rest of the semester and seeing how the partnership grows even more same here same here all right you take care